Kyle here from allmediareviews.blogspot.com to do like a video blog of some kind. Let's put this. Um, of like new releases, tours, and etc. Um, and actually announcements. The first announcement maybe I should make, and it's just, it's all, right now it's in progress, but you know, making all the top five, top tens, which the Marillion list, of course, nobody cares about. Uh, you know, it's a hundred songs because they have so many songs and I love them, but um, I'm going to try to make, I've started doing this, compiling some lists, a top five to maybe ten plus in some cases, I don't know, we'll see, uh, on movies per calendar year. Um, see if I can do this, we'll see how it goes, I, no promises, but um, I just started going through my I'd live all size, rate your music page, and looking at my ratings. Not everything, every movie I've ever seen is actually in there, but probably 70 to 80% of the movies I've seen, at least that I I, I remember seeing, or, you know, and then I see at that time, in real time, I've included in there. So I'm not including documentaries, though, really. Um, so while well, I love documentaries, they kind of just, it's like a different kind of, to make a ranking of them is kind of weird, so... Um, so that's coming up. Um, some tours got announced. Um, so everything, everything wasn't recently announced. It was back in May. And I guess they, the Raw Data Field Tour, they came to the U.S. last fall. They didn't come to or, uh, North America to here, so to Minnesota. So they are coming to the Varsity Theater on um, October 13th. So I'm looking forward to that. I'm, um, I got my ticket... <laughs> Being that someone can't stand for extensive months of time, although I'm doing better recently, um, I want to have a seat in a varsity theater in Minneapolis. I used to go to a lot. I saw a lot of bands there that I love, a lot of shows, memorable shows there. They would have frequently seats um, down, like on the floor. They'd have couches and stuff like that. But um, it's unpredictable with that place, even though it's under different management. So they have some seats above, and most of them were gone when I looked because I literally just bought them two days ago on July 1st bought my ticket so looking forward to that I've never seen them headline either um but i saw them in tw 2016 open for the joy formidable at first Avenue's main room but you know anyway that show i don't know if i talked about the deer hunter the deer hunter is coming here and i bought a ticket for that too they're playing at um the amsterdam bar um in st paul so first time i've seen them it's like five years which yeah in some cases it's not nothing most people you know they just they're in europe now they haven't been to europe in many years so but um not sure if I'm going to get on the guest list with the, the lifetime membership. I bought a ticket anyway just to be to not worry about it. But I'll give my ticket to someone that will call if I end up getting on the guest list uh, from Max um, with the lifetime membership thing. Because that's the way it works. The lifetime membership allows at least the first requests of people that are a part of the lifetime membership to be on the guest list if they can do it. You know, and they in that it doesn't have to be in their town either. Anyway, so. There was like one or two other. I mean, there's some other tours that are happening. I'm seeing hours on Friday, this Friday the seventh, at, also at the Amsterdam Bar. I'll probably probably do another another review like I did last year to see hours. Set list. I looked at the set list. I wasn't intending to, but I saw it posted on Instagram. I think it's kind of similar to the one from last year. I'm not complaining. I love them. It was a great set list. But anyway, um, I'll see. You know, I'm not certain of that. And then I'm seeing the Family Crest uh, next week, the following week on the 12th, and Wednesday the 12th of July at the Turf Club in St. Paul. So that stuff's coming up. I mean, there's I'm seeing local natives in August, and then September some stuff I'm not sure I'm going to see, but could see. And then Peter Gabriel, and then the, in October it's Peter Gabriel. Um, everything, everything in uh, the Deer Hunter, and then some stuff in November, of course. Maybe the Rock Hall. I don't know. So. Um, I wanted to, it's not really a shout out, this is sort of like mini reviews, you could say, or just early impressions from some albums that came out recently. Uh, last week, you had both the Guess Who's Plain DMR and East of the Walls Neutral Second, it's called. And I've listened to the Guess Who record, I want to say maybe three times in full. I mean, I've been listening to the second, the first track, The King. Since it came out, I'm trying not to burn out on it, but I'm already burned out a little bit on it. But somewhat to my surprise, I suppose you could say, this Guess Who record is pretty damn good. Um, maybe I'll do a separate review today, but sometime soon. Um, but yeah, although it seems like it, to some people it's sacrilege they're calling themselves the Guess Who. I don't know. 
Burton Cummings isn't in the band anymore. Of course, Randy Bachman left when, from BTO. I don't know if he ever reformed. Cummings and Bachman have played together. Does it sound like the Guess Who? Um, I don't. wouldn't compare it to the 70s stuff. You're not talking about American Woman and you know a lot of their hits from that period. But it sounds more like Jellyfish or Queen or... I don't know. It's, the songwriting is, is quite good. I mean... People are just, you know, the old school fans don't want anything to do with it. And people that I'm talking about now, like, is it prog? It sort of is. You know, it's not excessive, but um, it's very highly layered stu a studio record. Um, but it's still pop, you know. I, I'm, I'm even a little surprised how much I like it. I was very curious about it. Um, but so um, I only have a friend flying around. And the East of the Wall record, I've only listened to once. It's in my car. I need to get around to it. And I'm not listening to it around the wife. But I kind of think, and I posted on Twitter, it might be their best record since their basically, you know, finest achievement, The Apologist from 2011. It's really good. I, I mean, the last two records I liked, but I didn't really feel a desire to go back to frequently. Um, I can't remember the name of them. Um, but oh, we got we got the... The, the friendly fan um that's that's how that's how memorable they were but um and east of the wall they their their song titles are always sort of they're not like the Mars Volta exactly but they're they're not just e simple vernacular redaction artifacts and NP complete I didn't even rate them and that's how often I went back to them unfortunately but um, but yeah, this, the neutral second is, I was reading about the, how they made it. And I know they've had membership changes, like since the apologist, they may have had a couple of members leave. And of course they're related to postman syndrome and day, I think day without dawn, which both those bands I've never gotten fully into. Um, it's more post hardcore points, but this is more, this new record, just hearing it only one time. I've, I heard a couple of singles. They use some trumpet on it. It's more prog rock than anything else, but I mean, it's, it gets heavy. It's like, it's like Mastodon tuned down in a way, but also, you know, it's more similar to say like the Mars Volta or, um, Fair to Midland and that kind of thing, you know? Um, but anyway, I'm, I need to listen to it obviously a lot more, but my initial impressions are, are like, I'm really happy about this and it. You know, I did my year, my mid year list a few weeks ago and it would definitely be in there. Both these records. Then I wanted to just kind of shout out a few people that the normal, a lot of the regulars on YouTube, um, mostly YouTube. I don't think I, um, some of the stuff I've been introduced to or just been checking out slash introduced to of late, if, if this thing would load. One is, I mean, again, I'm, this is all work in progress. I don't know how much I'm going to like this, but one is the band, the anchor at their debut album. It's called. It, well, it all began with loneliness. Um, I guess this has Andy Tilson from The Tangent, who does like flute and maybe saxophones the most, and um, some other people. So I know uh, Rhyme Signatures, uh, Nathan on Shuffle, um, and Heavy Debriefing specifically have all talked about. No, I think they yeah, they all talked about the anchorite. Well, like I got my friend flying near my face. Um, I, I'm liking the combination of using chamber instruments with metal, and so I usually am a fan of that. I can be, so I'm going to spend some time with it. I've only listened to a few tracks on it, but um, anyway. Then Nathan on Shuffle specifically mentioned two bands, HMLTD, their album The Worm, which I think this is their second record. Yeah. Um, oh man, I'm, I, I listened to a little bit of that, and I again... I, one track is known as like is it like past lives or something like that, and past life, and then in, in parentheses it's Cinnamon song. Cinnamon, Cinnamon, the song Cinnamon. I think of I think I believe this. I believe it's a reference or an homage or tribute to Nina Simone. The piano arrangement is very similar, so um, I'm gonna be checking this out more. Um, and so I hope I can do something on the YouTube channel about it. That this album came out, I think it was like it was April seventh, so it's been out for a few months. But um, and then Harada, this band Harada, um, which it's art rock or something like that, they have an album, the debut album that came out called Mirrorland, uh, which I'm also liking. 
This one's a little more obscure than even the HMLTD record, but um, it, this one I, I, I have some optimism about as well. Um, this isn't really heavy music, it's but it's not like busy instrumental music either. But again, I haven't listened to it yet. I've only listened to a few tracks, so... Um, and then there's one other record I'm going to maybe check out. It's like black metal with... Uh, atmospheric black metal with some instrumentation, like some chamber instruments. Uh, Panopticon, Roads to the North, so that's another one. Then, actually, Rhyme Signatures mentioned a couple other records in his mid-season um, review, which I'm blanking on now. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of what's come up that, and then I'm still kind of taking in Brian Scary, of course. I guess there's two albums in the works for Brian Scary um, that could come out this year. Um, there's like titles for them too, I guess. Um, and, but there, you know, he's like sort of trying to figure out how to release them. Um, but I'm getting, I think I, I said something wrong at least one or two times when I was talking about Brian Scary. Where did my mini disc go? Here it is. I think I, I called them the shedding tears. It's not the shedding, it's the shredding tears. Um, but I've been listening to his debut album, which is known, I believe, was just known as the sh the sh um, the Shredding Tears. Um, here, let me just pull it up. But uh, you know, he's definitely my most addictive artist. I want to listen to Toehider more. I'm meaning to like still go back. Toehider and him have like sort of the last six months been my the two artists I've been trying to take in the most. But um, I've kind of d put Toehider on hold because been like in, in investing in Brian Scary specifically. Yeah, the album's called The Shredding Tears. The debut album effect, which came out in 2006. I don't like this record from just hearing it a few times as much as the others. I still like it, but um, it's interesting, though. Then I, I, I was looking at some of his history, and he actually um, did some soundtracks. He did a soundtrack for the movie called Black Bear in 2020, though it's it's on Spotify. It really literally sounds like soundtrack music. It's just atmospheric clips and stuff like that. It's with a guy named Gilil... G G I U L I L O, Gililo, um, Carmasi, yeah, Carmasi. But anyway, um, the movie itself, I'm not even aware of. But he did another soundtrack. Well, he didn't really do another soundtrack. There's a movie. Let's see. I wish listed it. I think I did. It's it's like impossible to find. I it was on. It came out in 2007 or 2008. Go to my movie list. I was talking about the movies. It's called... Well, maybe it's not on here. Elemental, no. Because I saw Elemental. I saw A Man Called Otto recently. Um, anyway, he did a... There's a movie that um, had, like, Anthony Rapp, who was in, like, Dazed and Confused, and... Um, it was an independent film that I, want, I, I was asking people to, like... I was trying to find, like, if I could actually find it anywhere. And it it just is not... Not available. I don't know where I'm going to be able to see this movie. 2007. Not Scaring the Fish. Scaring the Fish is another one that Anthony Rapp was in. But he played himself, though. And that's, that's the reason why it's not on his credits. Director, producer... Um... Well, there's one way to find out. This movie is an independent film about, like, relationships and about these guys who, um... Sh there's someone named Brian Scary. He directed a film? I didn't even realize that. He's actually got a somewhat of a yeah okay of a um, not extensive career in Hollywood but um, let them chirp a while that's what it's called I don't know if I'm ever gonna see this movie but the trailer looks good the reviews when it came out even though it was small very independent very the quote unquote mumble core there's a lot of movies in that genre which the first one I actually like um, funny haha from the guy Andrew Bajalski, he's like the godfather of mumble, whatever. It's a stupid term. But anyway, this movie, uh, let them trip a while. <laughs> the trailers look good, they look funny somewhat, you know, and then it has too many big names, but it's nowhere to be found. I mean, the only thing I'm thinking is because there's that related film that, um, Anthony Rapp was in is on Vimo. Um, and the trailers are on there, there's a couple clips from it, but, um, is getting in touch with some of the cast. That's the only, like on Instagram or something. Because um, I don't know where I can find it. Zach Galligan, these some obscure Hollywood actors. Laura Breckenridge, Brendan Sexton the Third. He was in Boys Don't Cry and a couple others. He had a re relatively big part in that movie. But anyway, so 
that Brian Scary, and then let me see if I can find it because he posted about it. I, I remember sharing it, but I don't know if these even have um, titles. There's two albums in the works. So they, there's one other big announcement. My apologies for being not on camera. So what did he post? He posted a couple of weeks ago. Uh, there, let's see here. I mean, the last rounds of overdubs of both giant new albums were mulling over strategies for injecting injecting them into your ears. You know, I think it's with Twitter, everything that's going on. Uh, things are a little tricky on the funding front, front, so that's holding things up. That's, you know, probably the primary reason we don't know more. However, the syringe is filling <laughs> and patience amply rewarded. Um, but, yeah, two records, potentially. The thing about him, though, is he has... Um, these records called uh, Scary's Closet 1 and 2, which, you know, a lot of it's like demos and stuff, but there's a lot of music on there that I haven't listened to. Having, like, listened to a lot of his proper albums. Um, but, you know, the thing is, most of the music I've been listening to has been 10 years or more. It's been 10 years or older. Um, Birds is the one record I've spent in the last 10 years that I've listened to, so I'm I'm wondering if, you know, I love Birds, you know, um, if this new music is going to be more in the birds vein, birds is a little different than, um, I, I, I misspoke. It's not called Zeke Full Station. Daffy's a lick, Daffy's a lickster, flight, flight of the knife, um, the shredding tears. But, um, I can't get enough of this guy. I mean, not every song he does is amazing, but he has so many, he's very much, again, very much reminds me of self in that sense. Um, although musically he's still different than self in some ways. So, um... Ben Sinister are putting out a new song a week from Friday. It's called, uh, what is it called? Um, and it probably is going to mean they're going to have a new album out. And I just actually had a dream about them last night. It's just weird. Let's see, where is it? Ben Sinister, where is it? Oh, that's right. That documentary series is coming out. Um, the Harmony Codex from Stephen Wilson... Well, I guess, yeah, here it is. It's called Price You Pay. The clip sounds super catchy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been five, six years since Foolish Games, the EP that came out in 2020. It's been three years now. So I'm expecting we're going to probably get a new full-length album from them, at least an EP, but probably a full-length album from them. I know Dan's solo career, they've been touring, but they also have been in the studio a lot the last few years. So, um as a Ben's fan, Ben Sinister fanboy, I'm going to be trumpeting that sucker, and I'm sure a lot of people also will want to check them out. So, um, you know, there's, yeah, there's some other records that I didn't even mention that in the midseason list of Ben Sinister. That's a really big deal when it, if and when it comes out. Uh, Small Leaks in Ships, I actually got a new hoodie from them. I'll just show it on a different video. It's downstairs. Um, their record is probably not far away from at least information about it. Um, but, um... I I have another topic for a video. Maybe I'll do it. Oh, that's right. I was okay. There, this isn't music. This is switching gears to movies. This coming Saturday, it's probably largely to do with the writers' strike and you know starving for content, second and third choice content. The CW is starting a series called Greatest Geek Year Ever, nineteen eighty two, which is um, I think it's mostly going to be about like talking about movies from nineteen eighty two. Um, maybe not entirely, but largely sci-fi. Um, but Robert Meyer Burnett, who's someone I've, I've liked, I love this movie Free Enterprise and followed him on social media. I met him once at a sci-fi convention, uh, in town here. Cool guy. Great, you know, um, fanatic fan and also someone who works in Hollywood. He's in, I guess, interviewed in this among many of them. It's going to be like one or two hours every Saturday in July. So it's not just once. On the CW network, I'm probably just going to tape it and put it on the DVR, but um, Greatest Geek Year Ever, 1982. Um, but, no, the thing, I, I have a, a, like a topic that I was even going to share on the message boards, and I, um, I didn't do that. Um, oh, Lato and Wright's album, Children's Song, and a lot of their catalog is on Spotify. I posted the thing a few months back about albums that are on Spotify, totally wrong about that specific one but um no um as far as music because i was talking to like the taste like music guys did their mid-season list and 
Those guys are on Rate Your Music, at least Jason is. I know, Jason and Joe, I'm not sure if Kramzer is, but um, love their channel. Watch freak, watch it frequently, comment and interact with them on Twitter and other social media. Um, they they have a lot more like ratings or ratings that are higher. And like the whole ratings album. So I think I might do a separate video on this. On my kind of mentality, I have not had a five-star album since Small League Sing Ships, uh, full, uh uh, face yourself and remove your sandals in 2015. Is that me? Is that a product of, you know, um, the music industry, what's coming out? I don't know. And it's like before that, I had a lot of records that were five stars or even four and a half stars. And so those guys find four and a halfs like nothing. And then they find a bunch of, they're like, they're surprised that they don't find five star records. And to me, five star records, a little more, a perfect record. It's a little more um, unique. It, it's got to stand the test of time. It's got to hold up. It's got to re bear repeatedly. There's a lot of factors I look at it, or it's got to have something super unique about it. So <coughs> that might be food for thought, a separate video, not for this particular this this video blog. But that's I think that's the gist of it. There's probably some stuff I'm not remembering, but um, of course Fourth of July is tomorrow. I don't know. We're supposed to go to a baseball game tonight. I don't know if we're gonna do that because we got storms coming in and it's a heat advisory. But um, Thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and we'll see you next time.